message sent to him, or just give me a piece of advice sent to him at the beginning of the year that this is a clean slate for him and maybe a chance to show um, what he's capable of? Uh, the message was, is you know, you're going to have to do the things that every other member of our group is, you know, and he was a fairly high draft choice. And uh, the development of those young players that are selected in those areas sometimes uh, gets pushed by the wayside when they, they make the, the NHL at an early age, you know, and then they're given maybe more minutes than, than most. You know, you're always going to see the, historically in the NHL, first round trick, a round pick is going to get more chances than a third round pick or a fourth round pick. There's always somebody that feels that they're going to find something a little bit more. And with us and him, we just felt that he was a, would be a good fit for us. He was a young player that had some skills. He had size and he could, he could skate. So it was all of those things. And that was a Brian Burke, you know, a trade and acquisition. And all we've tried to do is find him a spot, you know, and the tough part will be when Lupo gets back. Do you think his output is sustainable the way he's gone here, or do you see it as maybe kind of scoring bunches? I think if he continues to skate and move his feet the way he did tonight, I don't think that he shouldn't continue to score. If he's going to stay around the net and go to those tough areas, and he's going to play with our you know top six grouping of forwards, then he's going to maintain power play, you know, time. All those things are going to. You know, should indicate that he can continue to make contributions, but it's all up to him. This is the the day where where you mentioned Brian Burke that he left the organization to go to Anaheim, but it was a night where it seemed like the team played like the kind of team that Brian Burke wanted it to be. It's taken some time. Do you feel that this is when you two talk about the kinds of teams you want to have tonight look like that kind of team? Well, I just think that in tonight's game, uh, we were we didn't start very well. And, you know, from us and doing an evaluation, but we we got our skating game going in the second period, and once we can uh, get on that forecheck and continue to throw that puck in and, and come at teams in waves, uh, you know, we can be an effective team and grinding teams down. And that's what we felt the case was tonight. Is we didn't skate very well, or we were fortunate to get out of the first period uh, with the score what it was and. I think both teams would, would say that they've given up too many quality chances in the first that they wanted to tighten it up. But we've got our skating game going, and we expect our players to be physical. We expect them to get inside. We expect them to compete and night in, night out. And Just because you work hard doesn't mean you're doing anything special here. We want more than just work hard. We want people doing things that are more than ordinary. Coach, is there a confidence so that with this group that you're seeing that when you do fall behind by a goal that you, you don't even have to say much that the team know exactly what? Yeah, there's lots of, of, of chatter on the bench. Don't let that bother us. That's not going to beat us. That type of, that's what you try to instill, and the players have bought into that. We're not, we didn't panic when they scored their first goal by any means. We didn't panic at all. I think, again, there's peaks and valleys in the game. There's ebb flows that the ebbs go one way or go the other way on you, and I think we had more of that after we got through the first period. We settled down and we started to skate and we executed and we forechecked. We were a strong forechecking hockey club in the game. How do you feel about your team's ability to absorb a lesson like this week? You seem to be emphasizing, you know, you've got to compete right from the start because you, you weren't happy what would happen in Tampa. Yeah, I, I think, you know, do they absorb it? Well, I hope they do. You know, <laughs> you say that, in, and I've said it before that, you know, in certain parts of the game, you, 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 you do an evaluation, and yeah, they are, they're getting it. Yeah, they're getting it, and then whatever happens in the next period, they didn't get it. You know, where does it go? And that's the tough part about being in pro sports is if you had the ability to stop it right away, you'd be making a lot more money. You talked about, you talked about the energy. Um, in this game, I think there were nine minutes left. It's a one-goal game. You've got your fourth line out there. Is that something you have to do even more? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's it's imperative because you have to reward those people. You know, when when Fraser McLaren got challenged tonight, you know, it wasn't he wasn't out there looking for uh, uh, fisticuffs, but Scott was trying to to uh, stir the emotions of the Buffalo Sabers, and those are two big men going at it. 
and when you have a, a front row seat, it was about three feet from you. And I'm telling you, it's, uh, there's energy in those punches and there's big men going at one another. Uh, you know, you understand that that's a sacrifice and that's what he's willing to do for his hockey club. And I, I think you have to reward those people in certain situations. You know, nobody can question Mike Brown's commitment to our group and his work ethic, and nobody can say anything about David Stackel. So, and they're fairly safe defensively. The, the issue that I have with them more than anything is when they ice the puck. Because you can usually play them up against most lines, but as soon as they ice the puck, you know that the big boys are coming over from boards from the other team. And they kind of like, that's why I don't have any cuticles. Is there anything further in Colton's injury? No, no. Uh, actually, he'll have a an assessment done uh, via an MRI or uh, whatever the term they use. I don't know if it's MRI. I, it's kind of escapes me now. But it, we couldn't get it done today, so it's done tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Thanks, Ernie. Thank you. All right.